Welcome to the Morning Swim Show for Wednesday, November 25th, 2009. I'm your host, Peter Bush. In a few minutes, we will have your set of the week. But first, it's been too long since we've had a guest on to talk a little diving. Today, we have the head diving coach at Duke University. He's also the founder of the U.S. Elite Diving Academy. Drew Johansson joins us now on Skype. Drew, how you doing? We're doing well today. How are you? Doing well. You've only been at Duke three years. You've got Abby Johnston, Nick McCrory, and now you've signed Haley Ishimatsu. Yeah, we've had a nice run. Yeah, you're doing something right. <laughs> well, uh, tell us about this latest signing. I mean, Haley is as big as they get. Yeah, Haley's uh, just come off of, uh, obviously, the 2008 Olympic team and then a silver medal performance at, uh, in the World Championships. And um, we're just as excited as can be to, to have her become a Blue Devil. Now, Duke, you know, you guys are known for basketball, uh, maybe lacrosse. I mean, but you're not a swimming and diving school traditionally. Uh, what makes you think, you know, you guys can get to that level? Well, we haven't been one traditionally, but we're starting the tradition now. Um, the administration, as well as our head swim coach, uh, Dan Colella, have really been the, the spearhead to getting the program uh, on track to head towards the national stage. And uh, it's just such a great fit academically, uh, as well as athletically. The, the atmosphere on campus is uh, just amazing for, for the kids to succeed in the classroom and in sports. So uh, it's just a natural fit. I just remind viewers as we do from time to time, our guests are on Skype every once in a while. The, there's little glitches in the technology, but uh, we'll continue on here if uh, hopefully your picture will unfreeze. Tell us about the, uh, the facilities that you guys have there at Duke. Well, Duke just finished their third renovation of the Taishop Aquatic Center that has uh, really uh, made the place a, just a great training environment. We have a separate diving well with a full set of platforms and springboards. Um, state-of-the-art technology and video uh, analysis on the pool deck and then a, a 5,000 square foot uh, dry land facility for the, the swimmers and divers and um, we've really uh, pushed the edge and uh, are probably one of the top facilities uh, in the country now uh, in the last three years and the changes that have been made. Now you have some history with USA Diving yourself. Uh, USA Diving has had some down years lately. I mean are you guys on the upswing, or is it? Uh, do you, do you feel like you need to have a more solid Olympic performance before you can say you're one of the powers again? Well, I, I think we're definitely on the upswing. Um, you know, the the rest of the world is certainly caught up to the standard that the U.S. set back in the '60s, '70s, and '80s, and, and uh, the U.S. is uh, definitely. We've got some new leadership in the national office and some great young talents. The last Olympic team, the 2008 team, was one of the youngest teams we've ever had, and we were on the doorstep of medals in multiple events. Haley being one of them in the women's synchro. Um, so we we feel that our performance at the World Championships was uh, kind of our our welcome back to the medal podium, and uh, we certainly don't want to uh, leave that podium again. So. Well, what happened to make USA Diving kind of veer sideways? Um, I think uh, we've had, uh, we got a little complacent, to be honest. Uh, you know, we had, we had dominated the world scene for so long, uh, even as we had some indicators out there that showed the rest of the world was catching up, uh, we just uh, continued the status quo. And really, in the last four to eight years, uh, we've made substantial changes in the way that the coaches work together, the way that the athletes are working together and the way that we're training our athletes, the standard that we're setting for them that is that has put us back onto the international uh, podium. All right, well, looping it back to Duke, the season has begun. Uh, how do you measure progress throughout the season for your athletes? I mean, it's, you know, we're so used to hearing swimmers who train, 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 and then shave and taper at the end. I mean, how do you measure that progress in leading towards March? Well, the NC2A is a, a great place for us to uh, kind of experiment with the kids throughout the dual meet season. We can use different dives and put them in different situations that will challenge them uh, to give the coach a sense of exactly um, how their list might unfold when we get into the championship season. So we're not necessarily looking at the stopwatch and trying to uh, taper based on those numbers, but we're going to get some a good gauge of where they stand on each dive as the dual meet season unfolds and then a couple of major uh, invitationals that we'll hit throughout the year. 
next right after Thanksgiving, we'll be up at a, the Ohio State Invite, where the top divers in the country will be coming, and it's where the men's NZ2As will be. So we're looking forward to that trip. Well, Coach, good luck this season. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. We will be right back with the set of the week. You get more power and more space. The world gets fewer smog-forming emissions. The third-generation Prius. It's harmony between man, nature, and machine. Welcome back. Time now for the set of the week. This week comes courtesy of a pair of Olympians. A couple of recent sets that Jason Lezak and Christine Magnuson told us about on the red carpet at the Golden Goggles. Take us through one good set that you've done in the last few weeks that you've kind of gotten out of the pool and said, wow, all right, I'm doing all right. I'm, in, I'm feeling pretty well. Yeah, I mean, I'm finally starting to do some sprints a little bit here and there. I was just you know, getting my base in for a little while, but uh, I did a set the other day. I went um, 325s, followed by a 25, 325s, followed by a 50, 325s, followed by a 75, and then back down to a 25 again. And the 25s were just bursts of speed, 15 fast, and then the 25, 50, 75s were all out. And I took quite a bit of rest, so I got up to really good speed, and I was really happy with my, my times. What was your 50 time? I was, uh, from a push, I went 21 flat, which, you know, for me is pretty good in practice. Let's well, hear an interesting set that you've done in the last week, maybe even in the last month, that when you got out of the pool, you said, wow, I'm feeling pretty good. I I'm definitely getting somewhere this fall. Yeah, um, I've had a couple like that. Yesterday, I did some broken 100s fly, um, got down to an added 45.0. Um, I was in a blue 70, I was cheating, but um, <laughs> it was still a lot of fun. And you know, then I've just done some sets that were like 825s all from a dive, fly on 20. You know, and that gets pretty hard by the end, but you feel accomplished afterwards. But you know, I just sprinted a 200 fly in practice and dove every single one. So um, just sets like that build confidence. That's it for the show today. I'm Peter Bush reminding you to keep your head down at the finish.